How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today, got a bit of a big one, that's what she said of course. Um, yeah, basically, I'm going to finally do the Northern Aegis, uh, loads of the roadblocks. The bad news is, the setup to get it all ready and all the rest of it took bloody ages. The good news is, I then cleared five roadblocks and built bridges, etc. So, it was worth it. Right, to start off, I cut a lot of this footage out, but start on Cosmodrome, I'm going to go over there to get metal beams. Uh, so I'll start from the garage, follow the main road, wiggle around there, uh, yeah, get the metal beams from there, double back on myself, back past the garage, uh, I'll grab a little bit more fuel while I'm there, and then through the uh, gateway to uh, School River. And uh, again, it'll be heavily edited, but um, yeah, I'm using, for this trip, two dolphins, got two goddamn horses with me, of course, and I'm using the step deck trailers. A couple of reasons why, um, in theory, like, I could use... Uh, a sideboard and the ramp flatbed and then I'd have like six slots of cargo instead of five and consider I'm grabbing metal beams that'd mean I could get three metal beams instead of two but as we all know the ramp flatbeds are crap and they tip all the bloody time and secondly if I did put a sideboard on the dolphin I can't have the crane sideboard and ramp flatbed so I'd have to lose the crane and then if at any point I tip I now can't um, yeah, I can't put the cargo back on, I've got to bring something. When I was going through this slow mud, that dolphin tried to mount me. It was handy in a way, because it was sat on the back of the trailer, and it sort of stopped it having to go through as much terrain. Um, yeah, this is, was my solution, though. I've got the crane, I'll just wear a piece of cargo on my head, and it works just fine. I, I really do like this, like, an incredibly viable option. Um, obviously, with the metal beams, they sit wider. I could put it long ways on my roof. You'll also see at some point in the video there's a different way I've got. I sort of took the wood behind the cab on the other dolphin, between like the crane and the cab. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, we're motoring along. Obviously got the beams now. This is uh, on the way back. I just got to this point. This is a, a roadblock that you clear on Cosmodrome and I caught something there. I don't know what, but just how harsh it snagged me. It, yeah, just kind of made me tip. Um... Luckily though, got a goddamn professional with me. He escapes as usual. And to be honest, I was going to use this loaf. There's a loaf just in front of me. But um, I had to bring a Tega with fuel. So I brought a loaf. I don't know if you can see it there or not. If he's not there, he's just behind the tree. That's why it's just changed colour now. The only reason I used this loaf instead of the blue one I just flipped was because now I don't need to get this loaf out the trees. My blue loaf is still next to my dolphin. That was literally the only reason why. But as you can see, I could have just drove the loaf like out round the front of the dolphin and gone into the trees but yeah um, the crane was so terrible and weak that in the end I had to bring the second dolphin to load the uh, metal back on because I could kind of drive that closer to the truck there's like the metal you can see tucked behind the uh, cab and between the crane and cab this time it actually sits very well like that as well didn't really come out it's more went like I don't know there's some bug in this game with stuff moving. Um, this, I'll get to that in a minute. This is the wood, so going from the uh, Cosmo, uh, yeah, Cosmodrome garage up there to that trailer store to grab the wood, back down this way, uh, again refuel when I'm going past the garage. And for this setup, I was going to run double zixes, but um, there's a uphill icy road section, so I've got one zix and one dolphin. And uh, yeah, when I get to that section, I'll just make the dolphin the lead truck. Uh, for this one, I have gone for the sideboard uh, and the ramp flatbed. I've risked it without a crane. Uh, I suppose it was just to sort of try the difference. I can't have a crane on the Zix anyway. And, um, yeah, I wanted to try and get 12 pieces of wood if I could. Instead of 10, obviously, and this time I've got the, uh, the loaf on my roof. What I could have done, I could have done... Oh, no, in fact, sorry, I couldn't have done the step deck because the uh, Zix can't have the saddle low. But then I just ran like this as a double setup. Um, yeah, it just means I can have 12 pieces of wood instead of 10. Again, he heavily edited, but I just thought I'd leave this little bit in where uh, crossing this. Well, yeah, I don't know if I'd really call it a bridge these days. <laughs> it catches me out quite a bit, but these kind of uh, made it across pretty decently. Until I crashed into that wall. But I don't believe we had any tips or anything like that. See, that's the thing with those ramp flatbeds. You've got to be careful just when reversing, because every now and then... Well, not every now and then, near enough every bloody time. 
it will just flip your truck instead. Um, yeah, but that was getting over that way, started going through this mud, and then just after all this was like that icy hill, so I had to make the, uh, the dolphin the lead vehicle. It's a little bit slow through there, but nothing too special. Uh, so yeah, there I am at the trailer store, got all my wood sorted and everything. You can see one loaf is missing, but it wasn't like it fell off as in I tipped or anything like that. It's just when you switch vehicles and stuff, cargo moves around a bit um, and packed vehicles. So it moved the loaf on top of the dolphin. So when I switched back to it, it was already like half tipping off the truck. Um, yeah, this is the way back over. Like Again, I, just, I pretty much edited the lot. I just thought I'd leave a few little... Uh, things in like yeah that's how I got across the bridge that's how well it went well again I don't know if I'll call it a bridge some kind of impromptu crossing that could do with uh, some planks laying over it really because like I said now I've knocked all the loose ice around the edges away the, like the gap's getting wider each time so it's getting harder to sort of jump the gap rather than just plunge it into the, uh, the water between it but yeah going past the garage got my uh, I put the loaf back on well, he's on the wooden planks now. This is my big fat road train. It's a bit of a beast, obviously, in two sections, but two lots of uh, wooden trucks, two lots of metal trucks. I mean, that's from the gateway. goes pretty far around the corner. And then now, this is on Erska River, going along the bottom road. Uh, you have to sort of wiggle around there because there's a bridge there, but it's broken. I've not tried, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a stupid, bloody, invisible wall that stops you even trying to dukes a hazard over it. Um, I'm going to cut down onto the ice from the bridge like there. I could go along that road to the left, but it's super snow. It's a pain in the ass towing a road train through there. And yeah, you're just best off going down to the ice. There's an awkward rock there, but once you get over that, you sort of join back on that village, drive the road up, and that's it. So again, I've cut, well, this one, basically, I've left the footage of this dolphin and the Zix driving that way, because the reason I cut the Cosmodrome footage out, well, for a start, this video would have to be a two-parter if I didn't. How long it took me on Cosmodrome, the first part of this video would literally just be me driving on Cosmodrome, which, like I said, is a bit of an odd video when I'll... The title would be, like, Northern Ages Roadblocks, and then the whole video is me on Cosmodrome, and that's just part one. Um, yeah, the other reason is... I've drove those same roads on Cosmodrome multiple times on live stream on videos. It's like it's the t two only roads really you're going to use on Cosmodrome, and I've yeah I've drove them loads, so I don't need the footage again. I just thought, what's the point? The reason I ended up leaving this in in Erska River is because to be honest, I don't actually believe I've really I've zipped down here in a dolphin every now and then, but it's, I've not really made a video where, especially not like driving a big road train full of cargo along this bottom road so yeah that's why I left the footage in for this I thought it's something a bit more not really seen it yet and uh, overall it's not too bad uh, I had to make the dolphin the lead vehicle I thought that was harsh but even if it blew a tyre maybe but the amount of uh, suspension damage was a bit a bit extreme for like I didn't exactly smash into it at 90 degrees only just slightly brushed on it um, yeah I had to make the dolphin the lead vehicle because as you can see there's loads of uh, icy roads, plenty of hills, and I've tried, I've found out the hard way, not on this mission, but a little while ago, that the Zix has zero chance in hell of getting up there. And there is certain bits where you can run the Zix tyres in the snow at the edge, but there's also bits with barriers and all sorts, and it just, yeah, it it isn't sensible to do it. Like, you may as well just bring something with chain. Like I said, that's at least the nice thing with that Tatra, that they've got both sets of tyres, so... That doesn't become an issue for that, whereas the Zix, yeah, I couldn't run double Zix road trains because of the icy hills. This bit was a bit of a pain in the ass, if I'm honest. Because I've got quite a lot of chunky rocks in the way. Obviously, you're also going uphill. It's also kind of super snow, and there's also camber going on. Um, the other two road trains that came through here, I got more truck, like a rock kind of stuck to the underside of my step deck, funnily enough, which... Like, again, I think it was more of a glitch. I'm not really blaming the step deck because there was nothing there for it to even catch on. But it kind of sprung my trailer up sideways and then made me roll. So, and again, I use the quit and reload method because, like I said, that's just my way of, like, the game owes me so much time in stupid glitches and bugs that it wastes my time with. But, yeah, little bits like that where I can save myself five, ten minutes of just having to bring a crane out, load all the cargo manually, and it's like... I'd, I don't doubt that I can do it, I just at that point can't be arsed, especially if I consider it the game's fault that a rock just fired out the floor, stuck to my trailer and 
flipped me, so... Um, yeah, the... Zix was probably helped a little... Well, not really helped, but I was going to say, when I did it with the first two dolphins towing it up here, uh, the dolphin at the back was getting caught in the rocks more. I mean, bearing in mind, at least now, I've already drove past here, so I might have knocked some of the rocks kind of out of the way and spread them out a little bit anyway. But the Zix has got a 61-inch custom muds, I believe. It's, to be honest, it's the custom muds are not the advantage there. It's the size of the tyre. Strictly speaking, I'd be better off with 61-inch chained on the Zix at that point because they climb over rocks better. But, yeah, just the fact that it's taller tyres to begin with, it's sort of, relatively speaking, the rocks are kind of have a smaller influence. Uh, this bridge going along here, you see the dolphin's fine, no understeering, I'm not slipping to the left or anything like that. I was really thinking to myself now, I should just split the road train in half, because that Zix is getting a little bit close, and again, because it's not got chained, it will try and slip a little bit. You can see the trailer with the wood on goes immediately. I kept it flawed, because I, I could see that telegraph pole, and I thought if I can bounce the trailer off it before it has a chance to tip, then it won't. At this point, I did disconnect the, uh, the road train. So overall it's not been too bad, again if I didn't have a road train and I was just driving up here then uh, it probably yeah, would have been pretty smooth sailing, I think the dolphin would have just about got up that hill I was on about a minute ago where uh, yeah, there's sort of loads of rocks and camber and everything going on. Yeah this is that little section you've got to go around to the right because like I said the bridge is out. Which again, well I don't know if they've put these invisible walls on but it's a shame because I would like to use this... Um, as and when the mods, obviously not on this playthrough, on my mod playthrough, but when they had that uh, bridge thing, sort of that bridge that you'll see to the left now, that's a perfect example of where you could put a bridge thing spanning the gap. But oh, as you can see as well, in fact, there's concrete like roadblock things at either end of the bridge, so yeah, it's a bit of a waste of time, there's just that's never going to be a viable option really, I think. Uh, I just cut the bit out, obviously I just drove the same little route with the Zix and met back up with the, uh, the Dolphin. Carry on the road train. So now we're in like the bottom... Oh, I don't know if I've got my map always rotated the right way. I was going to say in like the south east corner, but... The UFO is over to my right. <laughs> That's probably one way of explaining it. Uh, here's the two bridges, which you hopefully should have built by now. You'll certainly make life a lot easier for yourself if you have. And you see, I've made it into high gear now and it's ticking along, but the annoying thing about it making the vehicle behind go a little bit slower than this vehicle will in high gear is that I'm never like built up to my speed in high gear and I'm just sort of chilling and floating along. What I mean is that was constantly making me use like 16 litres a minute. If it would just allow me to go the speed I could in high range, once I'm up to speed, my litre per minute usage would have dropped to about 6 to 8 once you're up to speed, because then your engine's not putting as much effort in to maintain the speed. Um, yeah, so not only do they make you go slower, but it uses more fuel as well, uh, which I believe they probably have done on purpose as like... I don't know. I mean, road trains are possible in this game, but I kind of get the feeling that they don't like them, or not that they maybe specifically don't like them, but this whole thing where they seem hell-bent on dragging and stretching the length of the game out as much as possible, I don't think they automatically like anything that might possibly save you a bit of time. And then they kind of find ways to, you know lose that time again and like I said doing a road train good news is I don't have to do two of the identical trips bad news is it makes you go probably not half the speed but you know what I mean it makes you go slower so what you gain you also lose I just prefer road train I quite like driving along with road trains and again even if it does take longer per trip I'd rather just do one trip that's longer than two trips because then the second trip that will be identical ground I've already driven on I'll just be bored for that entire time because it's like, yeah, I've already done this, I've watched it happen, it's... I don't need to do it again, really. 
steering went like I was just tapping left and right there and for whatever reason it had like super rapid steering when I uh, just did it to the right of it and flung in the water. I could already see it was sort of happening when it steered really quick so I hit the handbrake on my front end went off. I couldn't reverse out because the trailer via the bloody ramped flatbed was basically going to try and tip me with that stupid dolly axle thing going on. Uh, yeah, just pulled the zix nearer so I could winch to the back of that and we're good to go. While I was talking a minute ago, yeah, you've seen where I dropped down on that bridge. Um, the loaf, it auto unpacked out, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but I just drove the loaf ahead. He's already there, you see. He's a goddamn horse. Um, so, here's my first two dolphins that I got to this point. And then this is this little awkward rock. I'll kind of show you just how I got over this and everything, because if you do come this way, this is probably the most awkward bit. It's not biting in very well. There's a few trees you can theoretically reach with a winch, but they're those trees that just pop out of the ground, so there's not really too much point in wasting your time. It looks like you'd be better off sending your left wheels up, but the way the rocks... I don't know, they just seem to prefer if you send your truck this way. Not by much, but sort of have your left wheels touching the snow between the gap and then, yeah, send your right wheels up onto the rock. The long story short, it was... I've got up here before with the dolphin, but I think with this um, step deck and everything, you know, just anchoring me back down that way and all sorts, I kind of need the back end of my truck to bump up a bit. But yeah, I think the weight of the step deck and all the rest of it is just not happening. So, time to uh, send in the horse. And you'll see there's a Zix and a trailer there. I promise you I didn't touch a thing. You can see my truck's still in the exact same place. I just brought a Zix with a uh, maintenance trailer because I wanted to fuel all, the, all of these up. And I actually wanted to leave a maintenance trailer at this little village thing I'm, that's kind of in front of me. Um, but yeah, drove the loaf forward. That's why I just jumped the loaf off the trailer. Hence as well why I really didn't use the Zix. Um, using the loaf as like a land anchor, like a mobile winch point again. It was just enough that got my front end up. But at that point, the bottom, I believe like part of the step deck trailer was basically hooked on the rocks. Like, because I needed to sort of drive, imagine, straight down the screen the step deck's hooked on that rock and it's like it. the amount of force needed to sort of pendulum swing the back of the step deck round, it was just yet yeah, more more grip needed than I had um, this is where I find it's a bit weird though, I couldn't get up but obviously if I um, detached the trailer drove forward and then used the winch I could just winch from, like pull the trailer from different points and I got it bumped over that rock a little bit reverse back up uh, attach the winch, uh, sorry, attach the trailer again. Stick another winch to the loaf, I believe, because he's a goddamn horse. And he gets me up there, and obviously once I've got one truck, you can see all my other three trucks queued up behind, once I've got this one up, I can now uh, winch to this one with the next one, etc. Like, yeah, now, like, this is the second uh, dolphin going up. The only annoying thing I just left this in is now I've winched the trailer of that truck in front. It doesn't offer me the turn engine on, turn engine off thing. So this truck in front has just become like a dead weight, it's not trying to drive forward. It's just offering enough resistance on my winch to pull me up a bit, so I have to switch back to this dolphin and then just do it that way. Like, if I winch this way, I can turn that engine on. But yeah, it's obviously like they need to sort that out really, because it's kind of... Well, just another one of those things that's not as smooth as it could be or should be. But yeah, that's how I basically got them all up. And then lastly, I'll just show you this one quickly because it was a Zix. So just to show you how well this was able to get through here. And again, the nice thing is it can tip quite a lot without tipping. Like even that loaf on the roof, it doesn't really affect things too much. I did actually hit the uh, winch button a few times there. Just force of habit. I even was telling myself at the time, like, <laughs> stop it in the winch button. Because I wanted to see if I could drive up by myself. And I could. It's basically... it. Again, I don't think that's the custom muds that are a particular advantage. I think if I had 61 inch chain, that would be better there. But, because they are taller tyres, I wasn't bottoming out on like the little bit that was uh, catching me out a bit with the dolphins. So, uh, yeah, got to that village point. Again, Like then I used my Zix, refueled everything. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty close to the gateway now. This little section here, I don't know if there's ever like, going to be a mission to fix this. At least unlike that bit I hate on Cosmodrome. 
Um, there's not like awkward bits of broken wood just sticking up and everywhere around here. I cut that out because it's just slow and boring. See, look at this though now with the uh, dolphin. This is where like they've broke the gearboxes. I'm in first gear and the tyres just aren't moving. I put it into low and then they're just shaking and can barely move. Like, this is nothing like what the Dolphin used to be like. And again, all vehicles have kind of took a hit thanks to them breaking the gearboxes, etc. So, even though the Dolphin isn't as good as it used to be, it's still relatively one of the best vehicles in the game, without a doubt. But, yeah, it's just sad. And the fact that the maps have got harder and the trucks have got worse is uh, pretty bad. This one bit slow through there. To be honest, the I will say though, because the first dolphins had already been through there and broke up all the ice, that definitely does help. Like it is usually easy. I've been through there with a few different things, and the second vehicle through has an easier time of it. But at least with this one, uh, got it in yeah high low. It's not juddering the uh, the power on the hill or anything like that. You can see though on the vehicle behind, my loaf was packed. Because of the weird, just slightly broken, bugged thing it keeps doing, when I was towing the vehicle behind, it just like it's like it locks the loaf in place and the vehicle moves. And even though it's still packed, it will just keep sliding backwards along the trailer or whatever it's parked on until it falls off the back. But as you can see, it's fallen off the back. It should have fallen off, but it's still kind of locked on at the minute. So again, yeah, it's not really like it's not the old loaf's fault. It's just this broken game that <laughs> seems to slowly get more and more broken but anyway I disconnected there just because uh, going around this corner I just figured I'd end up pulling that sort of too tight on the inside and it'll catch that lamp post anyway but there's my two road trains in front or one I suppose one road train two vehicles uh, yeah this is the northern Aegis installation entrance and just quickly I thought I'd leave this in <laughs> I just thought I'd see if I could um, yeah cheat the game a little bit. I put the ramps down on the uh, trailer and you are actually able to pack a loaf like <laughs> including on the trailer which is pretty cool. So I was able to drive a little bit with it as well. Anyway, transferred everything across through the gateway to Northern Aegis only this time I've switched like the back road trains over so now I've got like a metal dolphin with a wooden dolphin behind it and then the wooden Zix with a metal dolphin behind it so I've got like half and half because obviously various uh, roadblocks I'm going to do need two wooden planks and one metal beam so yeah I need half and half. Uh, the first route I'm going to do sort of go um, along the road and to the left and there's this roadblock called landslide uh, so small landslide I think this might be called sorry it shrinks the screen a little bit and I need uh, yeah two planks one beam for that follow the road down more and you get this one called rock slide I only need two metal beams for that so in total, for this little journey, I need three metal beams, which is like one whole truck's worth. And I only need one wooden plank, so technically I could disconnect the trailer or something and not have to sort of bring it with me. But I do, because later on there's a mission, well, a contract called Humanitarian Mission, and at this monastery down here I need two wooden planks, so I may as well start to bring them with me and just get it a little bit nearer to there. And then the uh, the next journey I'll be doing after that is kind of zipping along sort of straight ahead on the road and you get to this first one called Eroded Road which only needs two wooden planks and then once I've done that I can carry on down the road, get to this called Fallen Bridge which I need uh, one uh, yeah sorry one metal beam and two metal plank, uh, two wooden planks and then also after that I can carry on once I've got that bridge built. Uh, I've got to kind of loop round through this forest because there's like a big gap there that's just like you ain't going to be able to jump it I don't think but then yeah connect back with the road go down here and at this point I could either cut over the ice or go round I'll sort of show you what I mean um, at this point when I'd drawn it I was drawing like cutting over the ice instead but it's instead of going up around there which there's uh, some rocks there and stuff it can be a little bit awkward cutting over that ice really isn't too bad that's the way I'd drawn this time but to be honest by the time I get there I ended up trying that other little route but yeah we'll get to that in a minute but there's a bridge there and um, it's worth doing it's another two planks and one metal beam 
so anyway, this is now the first journey that I was uh, just talking about, and like I said, yeah, um, I'm going to need all three lots of metal beams, so that works out quite nicely. But only one of the planks or something up to now. Getting through here, just to note, like, notice how my dolphin got through that bit there. It bumped up the rock, and then it kind of drove straight forward, and it was all pretty simple. I'll just, just bear that in mind for later, that's what I was sort of pointing out at the minute. So, got over all that. Not too bad. It's pretty smooth. I'll look pretty happy if everything went that nicely. And you can see as well, I don't know why, it's only been with this one step deck trailer, but you see how my loaf's front wheels have glitched through the trailer? All the time when I was on um, Cosmodrome and Northern 8, uh, sorry, on Erska River, it's just it only seems to be this one step deck trailer that's been acting weird. Again, though, through those rocks, got over there pretty nicely, no issues. Keeping an eye on that uh, dolphin behind to make sure I don't catch a rock awkwardly and tip. It's not really the dolphin I'm worried about, it's the bloody ramped flatbed behind it. And then, yeah, this is like that. You go incredibly slow through here, there's no real way of avoiding it, but it's only a little patch, so I don't really mind. Uh, yeah, veering off to the left now. Normally, I would go off to the right. And essentially have to cut like a long way round through the trees and pop out on the other side of this landslide I'm about to sort out. Uh, yeah, very slow through there. I assume the dolphin behind was kind of pushing into my trailer as well, so it's sort of giving me a bit of a boost, but it's not enough. So I could unpack that loaf, and I just wanted to see if I could unpack and repack it. That was sort of helping for most of the night, but this time the tyres are just sort of phased right through, so I was like, sod it on. Worry about that later. All he's really on there for is, like I said, mostly supplies and all that, so as long as he's anchored into that trailer, I don't really care how he does it. He's <laughs> a goddamn horse, figuring out a way to stay on the trailer without even needing to be packed. Um, yeah, by pure chance, a little while ago, I brought a Zix with a crane, and this is where I got to this point. So I just left it there, which is quite handy because this crane comes in handy now. Not, I've got a crane on this, but obviously, as you know, the small cranes are terrible. So I tried to move this metal round. A few weeks ago, I'd have been able to put the metal on the trailer and click pack. Now it does that stupid impossible to pack bullshit. So again, thankfully, I just had the Zix there that happened to have a big crane. Instead of having to disconnect the trailer and reverse right near it just to pack the wood and all the rest of it. We got that sorted, so uh, that's the wood done. My loaf got left behind in Erska because it didn't travel through the gateway. And I only just noticed now, so I quickly went and got the loaf. And I just thought I'd leave this thing because I was quite happy with the results. <laughs> I had a feeling that I could hit that the back of that trailer and kind of bump his rear end up onto those uh, pieces of wood. Stick a winch on, see? It's more than one way to pack a loaf onto whatever it is you're up to. And uh, yeah, there you go. He's on the wood. He's good. Got that horse or a vehicle. So again, going through this stuff. Of course, that has to give me all the trees that pop straight out of the ground first. Them's the rules on this game. You can see the trailer's starting to tip. Loaf, goddamn horse, jumps off, stops the trailer tipping. And we're good. And yeah, it found every winch except the loaf. This is the way. With the slightly broken winches. Right, so uh, now we're here. Just quickly, I disconnect the trailer because I'd like it to definitely take the pieces of wood out of my sideboard, whereas I don't, genuinely don't know. Maybe if I had the trailer attached, it'd take them anyway, but it might just take two off the trailer. And I'd rather free up the uh, dolphin, because now I can get the Zix with the large crane, stick the loaf in the sideboard, get him packed, reattach my trailer, but yeah, i just better off with the loaf in there. And now at some point, if I disconnect the trailer, I've still got like a little dolphin and loaf unit that I can send off to do other things. Just cleared the roadblock, and literally one foot in front of me. 
is a gigantic mahusive rock. It's not really a very good job of clearing the uh look at it. They call that clear. But anyway. Another little uh, road train running down here. Well, the, I, I'm going to tow this uh, vehicle behind. Again, I only need two metal beams now on this, so I don't really need to do the road train. So, in my head, I kind of figured I'll drive the road train until it becomes some kind of issue and I have to disconnect or whatever, and then I'll just leave it there and crack on. But, again, eventually I'm going to need some wood heading this way for that monastery thing, so I may as well drag it there if I can. It's a good job loaf's a goddamn professional, but it's a bit of a dodgy lamppost, because... It's not just a loaf. If I had, like, a cargo container packed on a vehicle, that would probably just hit that lamppost. And it doesn't even matter if you're on the road. Again, call that cleared. Hand me the dynamite. I'll show you cleared. Show you a gigantic fucking crater and all. Um, yeah, so at that point, I did disconnect the, uh, the dolphin with the wood and everything because it just hit that lamppost. And, yeah, I don't need to mess around with that at the minute. I'm not even too sure that. I sort of like it ran out of juice in high range a bit quick there. A bit quicker than a dolphin normally does. And yeah, along this section, I mean, I don't even know if or how much I'll end up using this road now of uh, unblocked it. I've kind of been looking at all the missions on Northern Aegis. That's part of the reason why I ended up just doing a massive fat long road train with all them to get them here. And now I can complete loads of the missions. Uh, I ended up looking... What I still need, though, there is a contract called Unlimited Power where I need two metal beams. So, I brought one extra set of metal beams than I thought I needed, but it turns out I do need to bring two more. I also need to bring two cargo containers and two lots of concrete blocks. But, I certainly got a massive part um, kind of, yeah, out of the way by bringing all this. Long story short, you just see me try and jump the gap there. I, had a, I caught something on the other side and then it tried to stall in high and just that little lack of power, like I couldn't apply any power for a second or two, I fell into the uh, like little ravine in the middle so I easily could have got out there but I purposely saved quit and reloaded because I just wanted to have another go at trying to jump it so yeah, that's literally why I did that, uh, I made it the second time got to this point, I could see my fuel was like near enough out, I just wanted to see if I could try and wing it and make it, there's like where we're going just up to the top of the hill uh, there's a telegraph pole thing laying across the road. It was about then when my fuel kicked in, so I couldn't sort of climb out of here. Um, yeah, just quickly got some fuel off the old goddamn horse. Clearly, uh, loaf juice has got more power to it, because I soon climbed over that telegraph pole that time. See, again, it's been doing this all bloody night as well, and the other day. Um... I'm in first gear, it keeps jumping to second gear, hasn't got enough power, then stops and goes back to first, and it's like, just stay in first, which it used to, until they broke it. Well, I actually don't think they broke that, I think they purposely did that, to try and make the low ranges more enticing. And then once that didn't work, because everyone just still stuck in auto, I think then they broke the gearbox. I'm not even sure if they, again, broke the gearboxes, or if that is now an intentional nerf. But anyway, we got it. There's a uh, maintenance trailer from when I first ever arrived on this map, got to this point, tried to turn the maintenance trailer around, it flipped my truck, and I abandoned it. It's been a free-range trailer ever since. There's a bit more money, though. Overall, I mean, they're not paying out amazing money. They're like five, six, seven grand, but the fact that I'm about to do five of them, kind of, I suppose this is probably one of the biggest paydays I've had in Phase 4 in one video. To be fair, it's probably one of the longest, well it will be, I would have said the longest setups needed to do this mission. Like I got a lot of the footage on Cosmodrome uh, the other day, like uh, probably a week or so ago. I was actually worried earlier that I thought I might have deleted the footage by now, but thankfully I hadn't. Well, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, this was the main footage. I got all this tonight, like uh, all the footage I did on Erska River and then here was what I did tonight. Uh, that's why I mentioned, you see how, because this hasn't got chained, once I got to that rock, it has zero grip on it, and then its nose just started sliding around to the left. And now I've got a winch on that tree over to the right, which is just, I'm kind of swinging on it so I can't physically slide anymore to the left. And I got over it, um, I just quickly, like, again, because I'm not driving this vehicle, it's been a dick with, like, how the loaf's packed, it was sliding back and all the rest of it. 
the metal also started to slip off, which is rare, because, I mean, you can see it hangs on there pretty bloody well, even when it's bouncing around and all the rest of it. But yeah, just quickly move the loaf back. I purposely dropped it down that step deck bit, so that even if it tries to roll forward and all the rest of it, it'll sort of hook onto that. Got the metal back on the roof and we're good to go. Thankfully, this little bit like the icy hill. It's a little bit of a hill, not enough to make these tyres like completely useless. So we're all good. But again, I've got the dolphin behind, we're chained on, so if I do need to make it the uh, the lead vehicle, I will do. Goes a bit nicer through there, there's not really any rocks in the middle. So we're all good there. That's this slow ass little puddle. Well, okay, probably a little bit bigger than a puddle. See, right, at this point, between switching vehicles, now my red loaf has just moved sideways on the roof. There's no logical reason why that would or should happen. It was packed the entire time. And this is what I mean, where the game just keeps moving stuff around, so... I mean, again, he is a goddamn professional, so he's still hanging on, even though two wheels have gone off. He's kind of doing what he did the other week on that other vehicle. It's very slow through here, as well considering that truck behind is pushing my trailer, which is kind of helping me a little bit. You've seen again, though, with a lack of chain, how my nose just started sliding off to the left, and I don't believe that would have happened with uh, chained. And, it, like, by the way, I don't hate these tyres at all. They're very good. They're, the, I'd say, the best mud tyres. Well, yeah, the best mud tyres in the game, but I was going to say they are, like, custom tyres, so... Obviously, they they are better than all the standard mud tyres, but there are, like, the Zix... Uh, sorry, not the Zix, the Tatrin might actually have the best tyres in the game, statistically speaking. But these are very good, I'm just... It's the icy roads that crap on. And rocks, stuff like... Anything that's, like, slippy like that, they're pretty useless. I mean, at this point, I'll even accept if they just added some kind of gritter into the game and I could go and grit all the icy roads before I set off. But yeah, it's basically like from the entrance, just keep following the road straight. You get to this point, this is where originally when I was exploring the map I got here and it's like, yeah, god. Turn around, went the other way, hit the next roadblock, found a way around, hit another roadblock, and yeah. Starting to get a little bit annoyed of... A little bit bored of hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock before I've even barely gone on the bloody map. But anyway, that's two pieces of wood. Again, I disconnected the trailer because I wanted it to take it from the sideboard. Uh, I can't see the money because it shrinks the screen, but are we talking six grand or something? Again, it's adding up. I just wanted to show you, I do use this way. Like, when I switch from the dolphin and then back to this, the, zip, uh, the loaf fell off the roof because it, it moved... It even more. Uh, yeah, I do use this technique though to get the loaf back in the sideboard. Like it's not just something I did on the videos for for fun. <laughs> well, it is for fun, but I like doing it for some weird reason. There, when I attached the trailer, it automatically disconnected the winch off the loaf, which doesn't really bother me because I was going to do this anyway. But it's just the principle of it. Like, why does it disconnect the winch? Because I attached the trailer. But it was a good chance to show you this. Pull the uh, loaf into the sideboard, and even though those wheels are propped up, I can still pack him. So, as I said before, I could actually get two loafs now in the sideboard. Got them professional. See, told you. When he he might be a thick little juicy horse, but he knows how to make himself skinny. So he's just figured out how to double his sideboard capacity, which is pretty impressive. I don't see any other scouts learning that shit. So then I just crossed the bridge, brought Dolphin, and later on I will actually need one metal beam here to fix that pylon, and since I have actually brought a spare metal beam that I sort of, well, I didn't think I'd need, but I just brought it for the hell of it, yeah, that's perfect, like, I've worked it all out, I still do need to bring two more metal beams, but I may as well bring them, and I don't mind that because it's like, I can just have, say, a Dolphin in a two-slot trailer, it'll be pretty rapid bringing just two metal beams to here, and doing this whole, like, four truck double road train obviously took a hell of a lot longer uh, yeah so I just dropped the uh, metal off there so now I've got sort of the loafs off the roof and in the sideboard 
the metal, the loose metal beam that was on top of the dolphins now gone. So we're sort of lightening the load a little bit, getting a bit more, a bit more streamlined, a bit less stuff sort of bouncing around and wobbling all over the place that could fall off. And then basically after you've built that eroded road section, uh, there by the way, it was, it was about now where my cat turned up, <laughs> headbutted the remote out the hand nearly, which is like, I still had my finger on the throttle. And then at about exactly the same time, the sun came beaming through my windows, so from about now I could, I could see me in the TV, a reflection of me playing the game more than I could see the bloody screen. And then yeah, like I said, the cat, <laughs> he was obsessed, like, needed some fuss immediately. Even if it involved keep headbutting my remote. So if the driving looks a little odd or the camera's not moving much, that's why. Because <laughs> trying to hold it in the air, dodge dodge him and all sorts. Nice and wide for the corner, <laughs> so it wasn't really paying attention. So oh, that'll be a gigantic fat rock then. Just noticed it was starting to wheel spin there because it's a bit of a steep hill with the light I haven't got uh, chained, so preemptively just swerved out to the side and uh, yeah, got at least one side of my wheels in that snow. But it's also nice to kind of go wide on that bit anyway because there's a lamp post on the inside or a telegraph pole, whatever. And uh, yeah, don't want the old dolphin to catch it. It's getting close, but at that point, you see the loaf brushes on the uh, the lamp post, and that keeps like the trailers just kind of gently touching it, but not really like enough to dig in or anything like that. A little boggy section here. I've never drove down here before. This was like because that eroded road uh, wasn't built, and then this side there's a bridge broken, so this little bit now you can sort of you can't get to from either end until or unless you build at least one of these roadblocks. That tree looked like it was going to fall on my loaf, hit my horn, <laughs> and it fell backwards. Like, don't you dare touch my loaf. Don't have loaf privileges like that. And it's not too bad. It felt pretty fair and decent driving through here. Didn't feel too painfully slow or unrealistic or anything like that. It was, uh, yeah, whoever balanced this little bit of the map, well done. <laughs> However, whoever made the ramp flatbed, well, <laughs> I won't say it, but I'm thinking it. Um, yeah, the ramp flatbed managed to get hooked on something, as usual. That tree stump, oh, not tree stump, sorry, just a tree. So I had to stick the winch on to just use the force to kind of break it. And of course, it's like no game, the truck right behind my bloody trailer. Which it couldn't manage. I mean, in the end, it turns out I kind of flung a panic winch out just to be safe, but still. This game has no concept of prioritising winches. Well, they do, but they've purposely programmed it to prioritise the crap stuff. That's the worst thing about it, is I know that they some thought into prioritising the winch order has gone into it. But they've made sure it's to our disadvantage, not our advantage. So, got to this, uh, yeah, top of that hill just, even though I was, uh, it's a bit of a hill. Um, what was that? Two lots of uh, wooden planks. So, uh, yeah, same again, two planks, one beam this one needs. I could barely see this earlier, because again, this was when the sun was absolutely nailing through I could hardly tell what was going on. I could just hear now celebratory type music. <laughs> I was like, oh, it must be done. Um, again, I can't quite see the money. Is it about 10 grand? So overall, I've made, you know, like probably over 30 grand, 20, 30 grand. And then this last bit, I'm going to, again, go down here. Got to go around there because of that little bit. And again, I originally said about going over the ice, which I still think is a perfectly viable way. But in the end, I was like, sod it. I'm curious now. Now what I did quickly, because I only now need one metal beam and two wooden planks, use the crane on the dolphin to move the 
uh, metal beams over to my sideboard trailer, so now I don't need to do a road train, which, I mean, this thing's got the advanced special gear, so it's not rapid, but... Yeah, I don't now need to have something winching behind me, go wide round corners, all that. I can just sort of drop the hammer a little bit and get on with it. I was unsure tonight whether to add this on to the end of the video, but I was like, to be honest, what's the other option? I either just never make a video on this mission, or the video is going to be the length of from now to the end of, say, what, eight minutes? Which kind of feels... It's funny, actually, because I, when I used to make Call of Duty videos... It was easy to make a video under 10 minutes, and I was kind of like, if I'm being honest, I kind of preferred to make a video under 10 minutes, because there was that whole thing where, you know, apparently people can put more adverts on videos if it's over 10 minutes long, so that suddenly everyone was making videos that were like 10 minutes and 2 seconds. They'd blab on about all sorts of bollocks, like, like, share, and subscribe. They'd talk about that at the beginning of their video, and it's like, I've not even seen your video yet, so... Why are you asking me to like, share and subscribe? I don't know if you're going to spend the te next 10 minutes taking the pits out of me. So, ask me at the end at least. But, yeah, people were just milking it for 10 minutes. So I was always trying to get my videos under 10 minutes. When it comes to SnowRunner, it almost feels a little bit of a waste when you have an 8 minute video. Like an, a mission. It's like you're only just getting started and then it's over and the video's over. So, yeah, I, I was just sort of saying it's one of those things I kind of noticed various other games it's quite easy to do under 10 minutes it just with snow running it doesn't feel like a lot's happened in eight minutes if it was just yeah a little standalone video on its own uh cutting through here though this is where like i've had to veer off through the forest and that because of that uh again though it's another place where that bridge building thing may well be pretty handy because i don't believe there'll be an invisible wall there I think that'll just be like, they've made the gap pretty wide, so it's not really viable to try and jump it. But yeah, the bridge thing, that's another place I'll be interested to uh, try that out on my modded playthrough again. This Don 71 I'm just going past, it's needed on the other side of the map. For a second or two here, I was considering, do I winch it and bring it with me? But to be honest, I'll probably be best off just collecting it at some point and driving back down the road I've just drove up now. And then down the other road where I just cleared those first roadblocks. And yeah, I think it's needed up near that monastery or something like that, so I'll do that another another time. It's not too bad over there. Again, though, I mean, like, there's sections where I'd rather these custom muds, but I'm just saying that is a section where change would have been better. It would have bit up on those rocks a little bit quicker. But then going through, like, See, now, Chained, undoubtedly, would have been better. I'm obviously, like, maybe catching on a little rock or there's just a bit of smooth, flat rock that I can't get a grip on. Yeah, like, there's certain sections, though, with, like, super snow and all that and death snow. Uh, the muds are better. The, these custom muds, shall I say. Well, overall, I do think the normal muds are slightly better than the Chained in snow and that, but as I've said before, there's nowhere... When it comes to steep, snowy hills, the chain now eat the muds for breakfast. And there's still nowhere that I can think of that I've not been able to get with chains that I can get with muds. So, yeah. But there is places that I can get with... that I can't get with muds that I can with chains. So, overall, that's just, yeah. But like I said, the best of both worlds, if and when they ever couple these tyres with chains... That'd be the uh, perfect case scenario for me so far, I think. This is a bit of an awkward section. It looks like it might be easier to go round that rock, but it tips off so far to the left as I went that way. I went, I was coming the other way last time. Yeah, it's not what you may as well just try and send that rock in the middle of the road under your chassis because if you try and go round it, it just it banks too much to the left and you'll tip. And uh, yeah, ask me how I know. But then this is now connecting back up to the road where, like I said, if that gap now behind me was uh, had like a little bridge thing over it, I would have just zipped straight across here. So it's a nice bit of speed going on. Sort of hit that lamp post. Thankfully, it didn't really delete my truck. I'm surprised because I've hit those lamp or telegraph pole, whatever, laying across the road. They're normally pretty savage. 
Uh, yeah, this is the point where I could have swerved off to the left now and gone over the ice. And it's in my Northern Aegis exploration video. I was going the opposite way across the ice, but you'll see it's pretty fair ice. It wasn't brutal like some of the ice. But yeah, I just thought, sod it. I have actually been this way before as well. I went this way to scout, to collect this bridge. Is it called, like, Bridge at the Checkpoint? I've not highlighted it yet, but... Yeah, I've already been round here. I just remember that, I mean, it's not exactly, you know, a smooth road. I still, even now, possibly go in the icy way. It might be slightly better, but... I wanted to see, is this doable or not? So I thought it would be best to get the footage of it. I mean, to be fair, this way is probably a little bit more fun in terms of, like... There's a few rocks to dodge around, climb over and all the rest of it. The other way, going through the ice, you're pretty much just going to be squeezing the throttle and going forward for a minute. See, and again, it's just times like this where the chain would help. Thankfully, there's some kind of... Uh, oh, it's not that lamppost or whatever, it's a sort of dead tree on the floor that I was able to winch to. Thought I might have to send out the horse for a second then. That's just a little glitch there, apologies for that, but I don't get missed much for anything. Oh, I couldn't have missed much because my fuel tank's nearly empty, but yeah. If it cut out like half a minute, I'd have no fuel by now, I assume. And again, I've got, obviously, my low fuel. Uh, I've also got a roof rack, but just out of curiosity, I'll see in, like, could I make it? Without having to, like, refill up or anything like that. Well, I believe the last time I filled this up was uh, with that other Zix with the maintenance trailer on Erska River when I had to climb them all up that rock. Always has the wrong menu for me. pull them off. That's the last one built. So yeah, we did a uh, small landslide, rock slide, eroded road, fallen bridge, and bridge at the checkpoint, which is, is that 11 grand? So like I said, overall, we must have got 35 odd grand, maybe even more out of this mission, or these bunch of missions. And uh, yeah, that's the road built. And then there is a couple more missions, like there's um landslide in the city and fallen tower, but they appear to have trailers next to them, like I believe the materials for them are already there. But um, yeah, anyway, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn beast.